Hi, my name's Antoinette and I'm here to talk to you about drawing. I studied at the College of Art and left there in 1979. Um, drawing was a big part of the discipline that we had to learn while we were at college. So, for those of you who haven't done any before and may be worried that you're not going to be able to do this, I can promise you, you will be able to do it. It just takes practice and time. So. It's like anything else that you've ever learnt in your life. When you learnt how to throw a ball, you had to coordinate your hands, your eyes, your brain, and it didn't work the first time, the second time, maybe the tenth time, it even didn't work. But um, you would have got there in the end. Um, drawing is just like that. Okay, so just a little bit about the way you want to draw. Whether you want to make it quite realistic or whether you want to make it a way of getting a feel of something. This was a drawing that I did of two art restorers in their studio. That again was the same studio. It's all quite as it was. This drawing here, I've been a bit more interested in the decorative elements, patterned cushion and the pattern of books in a bookshelf and some leaves. This drawing on the other hand, there's a, a door, but you can see the perspective on the door. It's all turned. It's about someone who isn't feeling great. So the perspective isn't as it would be if you were just sitting in a room with the person. So even if you're drawing something representational, you can still play with it to get the effect that you want. So if we think now about how you hold a pencil, typically if you haven't done much drawing, you'll probably hold a pencil like this, a traditional writing grip, which is great for writing and precise small work. So if I wanted to add some more small clover shapes to this section of the drawing here, then this would be ideal. So a more flexible way to hold the pencil is to have it in your hand with a much lighter grip and imagine it's a chopstick or something, you're pivoting the pencil using your fingers and thumb and you're not you're not kind of pulling this finger around as much as you do in the traditional grip and you're able to have quite a bit of mobility there with the pencil. So this enables you to draw much more. I'll pretend I'm drawing my yucca plant. But you can get more flexible kind of movement with it and you can cover a lot more paper. You'll find yourself moving your pencil around kind of get the effects that you want and you can be as light or as heavy as you want to be really. So the third way which is most commonly used if you're drawing on something which is vertical or at a distance is to hold a pencil like this. So across your hand, supported by the thumb and this gives you the ability to cover the whole paper so you can easily I want to draw an arc that's very easy notice you're using your elbow to to move if you're drawing vertical lines you will change the position of your arm if you're drawing horizontal the other way so you can use this for really big kind of drawing styles. The kinds of paper that you have access to will also have an impact on your drawing. This pad has a very smooth paper, it's like sheen on it. Um, it takes very even lines. This isn't as smooth as the surface here. It has a little bit more texture to it. So you can sort of in areas like this, I don't know if you can see, you can kind of play around a little bit more with your hatching and your strokes. 
you don't have to be representational, you can be abstract. And you can see um, this, I've used a pencil on its side, a very soft pencil on its side. You can see the fabrics, the fibres that are making up part of the paper, that make up part of the design here, where they've caught the graphite in a very strong way. But also in the in-between bits, they make the spaces between the marks quite interesting to look at. If I want to draw these, I don't want to make the job too hard for myself. At the moment, you can see they're set against a very busy background. There's all sorts of labels and stuff stuck on the refrigerator behind them. Um, so I'm going to get up and I'm going to move them to a slightly less busy background. It just makes it a bit easier to see what you're going to try and do. Now, I kind of fancy having another shape in there. You see there's a bowl of fruit behind the flowers. I don't particularly want to draw that, so I could move it or I can just ignore it. I think I'd like a round shape, so I'm going to choose either that bowl there or this bowl here to go with them. Again, in terms of making things easier for yourself, it's not so clear on the video, but this bowl on this side it's a very shiny bowl, there's lots of reflection going on and there's a lot of things which you might want to really spend time on to get right. Whereas the second bowl is a matte finish, it'll give me the shape I need without creating a struggle to try and get it right. So I'm going to use that bowl. Okay, so that's quite a nice little composition now. Drawing is going to take up the whole of a piece of paper, certainly in the height. And if you had a piece of paper that was the same format as this, it would take up the whole of the width. So I'm starting off here with drawing of my flowers. I'm aware that they're going to go at least up to the top. There's a kind of group of them there, I'm just sketching in groups quite lightly. So the group there. The height of the vase is about here. And then I have this feature here of the little Japanese style vessels, water in the vase to about there. There's a lot of area of stems. This produces a, a nice textured part of the picture. And then there's a sort of couple of heads of flowers coming down quite delicately here, almost as though they're looking at the bow. Some leaves. These flowers are quite busy, so I can use quite a quite a light, quick touch to depict them. Notice I'm not trying to depict definite flower shapes yet. Now the reason I'm doing it like this is because sometimes when you set off doing a drawing you suddenly discover that you haven't left yourself enough room to fit in an important part of the picture. You have the top of the vase, a little height there. Just need to bring that down a touch. It doesn't matter when your strokes are as light as this if you have to do something like that. So I would now tend to move to a softer pencil just to kind of pick up some of the main features. The vase has quite a nice darkening towards the base. I might want to capture this. You're selecting all the time unless you're going to do a sort of photo realistic picture in which you know where you have every sort of tiny item perfectly positioned, you are going to be selecting what you think are the most interesting things. And that's, you know, your drawing of this is going to be different from my drawing of this to somebody else's. I really like the shape of this little, and it has a slight, has a slight belly to it, which is nice to capture. And then the 
this little sort of collar of a foot there. And then we'll just look at these flowers coming down here. I hope you can see this. I wear. So they have a beautiful, delicate edge. There's a curled over leaf there. Another flower coming in. Some little stamens there inside the flower. Some leaves behind. some other leaves hanging forwards and you'd move through your whole drawing slowly emphasizing pieces that are of interest and then you can become more and more detailed more and more specific in different areas if i just look at the bow now as a nice shadow down here there's a shadow here, but then there's a bit of reflection here, so the shadow doesn't go right underneath as you might think it does. And this is where it's important to use your eyes as much as you use your brain when you're trying to work from observation. So this side of the boat actually has a lot of light, but it has a reflection and a shadow from the leaves that are hanging over it. So there's this quite flat shadow from the leaves just hanging down over it. Okay. And that gives you a sense of how forward these leaves are compared to the vase which is sitting behind the bow. So that's just a few little tips.